welcome back to Sector One, the first stop. You should make me on my <laughs> <laughs> sniff. <laughs> I was just dying. Keeping that in, keeping that in. I'm Sid, and today oh, I'm Lily. joined by Lily and Maris. Unfortunately, Devon can't be with us today. She actually is up in Scotland for her dad's wedding. Congratulations, Devon's dad. Yep. Congratulations. Mm. <laughs> um, but today we are going to be giving you a little review of the Styrian Grand Prix. Obviously, we're staying in Austria for next weekend's Grand Prix, so we get double the fun. Austria is oh, actually one of my yeah. favourite tracks. I love Red Bull Ring, and usually racing is a lot more exciting than it was this weekend. It feels very yeah. weird to be thinking about the fact France, the French Grand Prix, was more exciting than this one. I mm-hmm. would think France is more exciting because it was France and we're so used to a boring race. Exactly. Like that's, it's just really exactly. sad. Mm-hmm. There were too many expectations on this race to be yeah. really good. Exactly. I think it just exactly. was like... Mm-hmm. Right. Should we go on to the pyramid, guys? Yeah. As, mm-hmm. as I like to tell everyone, even though it's not a fan favourite, I like to tell everyone it's a fan favourite. So. It is. We, it I is. feel like we just decided it's the fan favourite. Like, we enjoy it, so we're like, fan favourite. Yeah. <laughs> At the bottom of the pyramid, you know what we like to do here. We like to put it as non-drivers. And so, yeah. obviously... We put mm-hmm. it as George Russell's power unit. I can, I'm aware that this is a Renault power unit. Mm. However, I could not find <laughs> a Mercedes Williams power unit. So you're going to have to deal with this picture. Okay. George Russell's power mm-hmm. unit. He lost his first points finish for Williams. He started P10, his best qualifying position in that Williams. And he lost it all because of this freaking thing in his car. <laughs> And I'm mad about it. I'm annoyed. Reliability mm-hmm. issues will be the death of me. They're just no, so aggravating and frustrating. Yeah. And there's it's nothing ruined to my blame. Year. Like I'm ruined. Mm. I feel like I that's so the upset. issue. There's nothing to blame. Like if it, if it was a strategy yeah. call, you could be like, oh god damn that strategy team. If it was George Russell binning it into the wall like he did in Imola, you can be like George's Ooh. mistake. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's nothing to blame on apart from this. It's yeah. really so annoying. Aggravating. It's so frustrating because he had such good pace. Exactly. They were saying mm. he was literally lapping, uh, lapping, lapping the same as like Alonso and all the cars <sighs> around him. Yeah. At one point, he was a tenth quicker than Alonso and could have overtaken him. Then he came into the pits and I saw it and it carried on and he just stayed there. Just and yeah, it came just up sat, eighteen sat. second pit stop and I was like, "No, nope. really going to do that to George? <laughs> what is happening here? What is going mm. on? I was fuming." George, it ruined my day. George believes that he could have got up to P7. He was currently riding in, P- driving in P8. I've been doing too much MotoGP stuff today. He was driving, <laughs> driving. in P8. Yeah. And he could have gone on for that P7. He was closing in on Alonso. Like, quite and, fast you know, as well. Exactly. It, yeah. was, it was genuinely surprising. Mm. And, you know, it wasn't like he didn't have anyone fast behind him. It wasn't like it was just the back markers. He had Vettel behind him. He had Ricardo behind him. Like, yeah. He was a fast mm drivers right on his tail Mm -hmm. with a lot of experience in their pocket in a lot faster cars so George well done for this weekend buddy very proud of you Mm -hmm. very very proud not proudly power unit we love you we're proud of you we support you like there we go exactly (laughs) hugs kisses yes okay next we have Esteban Ocon where was it Exactly. Was was he still in France like were you still (laughs) I know I don't remember his name being mentioned in the race once he finished mm. P14, and yeah, he managed to make up three positions, but his team it was in P9 getting points once again, mm. and he missed out on a points finish. I feel like ever since he signed that contract, he's just been going downhill. Yeah, because yeah. I feel That's like it's it. because he's got the security now, he doesn't have to prove anything. Well, little mm. does he know, they can just pull the contract away and pay him out of the contract. It's not that hard and put someone like Lungard, Joe, someone who deserves a seat in it. Yeah. Mm. So I was... I was having this conversation with my dad about the difference between like different sports. So we look at Formula One and mm-hmm. yes, it's a team sport. We're doing it for the constructors and the teams are all involved in on pit stops, etc., and putting the car together. But Esteban Ocon, realistically, he's driving for himself. Yeah. He's driving because he wants to be world champion, not because he wants his team to be world champion. That's not his dream. His dream no, is dream to is be the world champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas you look at a football team and if one, if one football player isn't doing well, that affects the whole team but it's a team sport because they want to win the championship together they want to win the euros together do you know what I mean so it's like Mm -hmm. it's very different Esteban could just stop trying and that would be that whereas a footballer in a team if he stopped trying he would 
affect everything. He would affect yeah. everything and he would be out within a second. Yeah. They'd put him on the bench because he's not performing. Whereas Formula One, he can do that because he's now got the security. And we yeah, obviously and- have seen mm. with Checo that, you know, signing a contract doesn't mean everything. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's also the fact that, he, like you said, he can just stop. He could just move to another team and get the championship. Like, he doesn't care about getting it with Alpine. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. Someone like Max may care more about getting the championship with Red Bull due to like the nurturing from what being 13, but it's still his goal is to be champion on his own with whatever so, car it is. Yeah, he, he does so, not care what car he's in to win the championship. Yeah, it was like if next year Williams was the best car on the grid, Max could hop in that Williams. I'd be like, Oh, see you, I'm going to Williams and getting my championship with them because they're, they're in it for themselves. It's a little bit selfish in a way. But, but that's what the sport mm. is. Yeah, that's what I like, though. That's what I kind of like about it, because it's sort of, they're all a little bit, a little bit selfish. But I always yeah. say this when I'm talking to form- about Formula 1 to people, is I love the team aspect of it, though. Like, I yeah. love the fact mm. that if the mechanics are having an off day and do a slow pit stop, that could be someone's race completely ruined. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't just his race pace that was bad. He literally qualified, what, P17 behind oh, Latifi. God. Oh God. Like, I don't even know what that was. And you compare him to Alonso, he's been in that, like, Ocon's been in that car for, like, over a year, and Alonso's yeah. just come in. Did he even try? And he's already like... thrashing him. Yeah. yeah. It's as if he just did you came to the passing? weekend and gave up before he started. Yeah, just, you know, got in the car. Just did I'm not feeling it this around. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's no excuse for that pace. I haven't seen anything about an issue with the car. I no, haven't seen anything about him being held up and qualifying, you know, using the wrong tyres. Just mm-hmm. has not been there. He hasn't even been in the mm-hmm. media interviews. I don't think I've seen him once yeah. on Sky Sports this weekend. Neither have I. And because it's the same race next week, he's going to have to improve it a lot. The bag, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. So next up, we have Charles Leclerc. Charles oh. Leclerc is a bit of a different oh, dear. one. Oh, It's a 50 50 one. Yeah. Mm. He got driver of the day, which personally, I do not think he deserved because he did ruin his It was an races. odd one. Yeah, but she's like, I agree with it, but I don't agree with it. He had an amazing second drive. half of the race. Yeah, yeah, his recovery was incredible. So his first incident was with Gasly. They went three wide, and he clips Gasly's rear tire with his front wing, damages mm-hmm. his front wing, but then also gives his best pal a puncture and suspension damage. So Gasly has to retire when Gasly's trying to maneuver his <laughs> punctured tire. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> he then crashes into Nicholas Latifi and Antonio Giovinazzi, giving Nicholas Latifi a puncture. And it was like dominoes. It was just this string of events that, you know, ruined a lot of people's races. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Latifi could not come back from that. Gasly had to retire. And then further on in the race, he slices... Kimmy's rear tire mm. with his front wing. I thought so, he'd get a puncture from that as well. Yeah, it was the other way around. It was the other way around. It was, it was, it was, it was yeah, around. it was his tire on just the. Honestly. He like just cut in front of him for no reason. And he had loads of space. Of yeah, no investigation, nothing. Yeah, I just. But then when something tiny and like minor happens, there's like a full investigation, like a fifteen thousand place red penalty, and you find this, and then you know mm. he he does something that could have been potentially damaging to both races and could have caused yeah. you know a pretty big crash you know a big puncture into that corner mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, i get lap one on. i get lap one like incidents at turn one if they like yeah. go wide but especially that where he clearly like cuts across or makes a like, you're not allowed to move under braking or move that quickly when you're going that high speed yeah it was just luck was on his mm-hmm. side today i think we can agree that like he had a lot of luck on his mm-hmm. side well, I mean, maybe instant. it helped him. I was going to yeah. say, because then he got on the hards, had a really good long stint. Mm. So maybe in a way mm. it helped him to have a better race, but you don't yeah. want to have to have a recovery drive. No, you don't want recovery drive, do you? No. no. But a similar thing happened in terms of, you know, FIA not giving out penalties, just kind of bruising over stuff. Is A similar thing happened with, I think it was Checo and Lando. I think Checo was a bit dirty towards Lando, pushed him a bit wide and mm, moved under yeah. braking or something mm. something of the sorts he was talking about in his Sky Sports interview. But the FIA seemed to be having a snooze today. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where they were, but they, they, they seemed to be having a bit of a nap. And then we're in Baku and everyone got a penalty. Like you got a penalty yeah. for breathing out there. And then in here, was, oh, just do it, do it, you please. Do it, you want. <laughs> Michael, right. Michael was having a cup okay. of tea. Yeah, oh, you want to you want to run wide and knock him off track? Do it, it's fine. You do, like, you, Han. <laughs> it's fine. But one, we have to credit Charles Leclerc for his outstanding 
outstanding recovery drive. You know, he yeah. did drop back mm-hmm. to like P18 from having to pit early for a new front wing and fresh hard tyres. But he managed to make it up right behind his teammate Carlos Sainz up into P7. So yeah. Carlos and Charles both got some very, very important points for Ferrari this weekend, putting them ahead of McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. Yep. Next mm-hmm. up, we have the other Ferrari driver, Carlos Sainz, you beautiful man. Mm-hmm. But we have we have to take into account he he wasn't very good this weekend. He had a poor mm. quality. He was out yeah. of Q two. He had a, was awful. He had a slow start, but then he managed to bring it up. The blue flags. You have to admit they did help him. If Fernando mm. Alonso hadn't have got that blue flag to let Hamilton pass, I do wonder whether that battle would have continued and Sainz yeah. may not have got track positions. The blue flag certainly helped, but nonetheless. He controlled it and managed to get ahead into P6. Did really well. He actually had a yeah. really decent race. His race wasn't too bad. His quality performance was abysmal. It was when the Williams is faster than the Ferrari, we have a problem. Oh, yes. yeah. That was the thing. <laughs> yes, that was do. what got me. Like the Williams was faster. And I just saw it and I was thinking, hmm. It's well, a bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, like in like, mm. it, it just wasn't, it wasn't his quality, but he brought it back in the race. And that's mm. all that matters. Like that's what scores your points. Yeah, so, I still think out of all the drivers that have moved, he's still the most consistent, being 100%. able to get in the points and being yeah. able to still score for his team because, 100%. you know, sad about Ricardo and his whole race. But yeah, Carlos has been able that. to, yeah, Carlos has been able to, you know, at least keep pace with Charles and get good points for the team. It was ahead of Charles in this and obviously mm. you, know, you yeah. have to take into consideration Charles' errors. But Charles was taken up half the grid, so mm-hmm. exactly. you know, he, was a bit, he was rather busy. <laughs> Still managed to catch up, though. Next, mm. I am very happy to say this, we have Lando Norris. He was mm. flying in quality. Yeah, absolutely was. flying. I was, who is this? Yeah. Are they in a McLaren mm. or are they in a Mercedes right now? Because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bit confused. This man was ahead of the Mercedes in most sessions this weekend. Qualifying one, qualifying two, he was ahead of them. I was just like, okay, come yeah. through. Mm. I see you. Congratulations, my friend. He started P3, and that was obviously because of Bottas's three-place grid penalty. However, this was his best qualifying of the season. He managed to yes. hold on for a while. However, inevitably, Sergio Perez did get past. And I think yeah. that's that's almost a given. That was kind of going to happen mm. because they were faster. Although yeah. I was pleased to hear... Checo saying over the radio like this guy's so fast and this yeah is like, mm, like I can't yeah. get I need more power I was like I was like go on Lando <laughs> do you know mm. like okay something's going very well here it is. but Lando mm. did open the door and let Checo through but this was for the greater good because he wouldn't have been able to last on those tires yeah what did you guys mm. think of Lando's race what did you make of it I've just mm. ranted oh, at you about yeah. it yeah <laughs> it was good you know I can't I wanted to win the podium I wanted it to be like a full like circle you know first podium and mm. then back to back a year later but it wasn't it was good you know I was kind of sad when I saw him not let Checo pass but you know make it a little bit easier for him it just yeah. it broke my heart because I wanted him on the podium but all in all he had a pretty decent weekend you know exactly yeah and all things considered a decent weekend Definitely. he's Everything literally been way. he's literally been flawless this season as if he's finished in the points every single race yep. i think he had like one p8 and then they've all been like p5 five. or higher yeah honestly Crazy. Like, he is so fast this season apart from max he is like the most consistent yeah, up there every max. single week it's not like a track thing it's a him thing where he's just <laughs> really good now and yeah, what exactly. i found interesting was because of he's so he was so fast this weekend and he held up Checo and Bottas, whether that, you know, like input into the race as to whether they were in the fight. Because yeah. Lando being there meant they lost like 10 to 15 seconds. So they weren't in the fight, which is crazy. Which obviously Red Bull Mercedes can't let a McLaren get ahead of them. Yeah. But that's so good for Lando because then he's sort of keeping pace with them a bit. So he builds a massive gap to people behind him. He is yeah. doing amazingly yeah. this year. It's it's astounding. And as you say, it's not just a track thing. It is a him thing. We've raced at street circuits. We've been at high downforce tracks. We've been at tracks where you need high speed. We've been at tracks where you need low drag. We've been at a variety of races which highlight different aspects of cars, like which show different strengths. And he has been consistent at 
every single one of them mm. he's yeah. really shaping out to be an amazing driver and we know no, people always say that he's mm-hmm. very overrated and this is specifically because he has a lot of female fans i think we're all aware of that but i think he's really proving himself this year he's showing mm. that he is not just this twitch streamer part-time f1 driver he is a full-time mm. formula one driver and he's yeah. not going anywhere anytime soon as we can tell from yeah. that contract mm-hmm. he has recently signed i think people have overlooked him this season completely like i think yeah. people this season have just sort of gone and ignored him which has really annoyed me mm-hmm. like really mm-hmm. annoyed me yeah and it's quality and race pace exactly like he's consistent across everything even free practice sessions yeah it's crazy he is one to keep an eye on Mm -hmm. for sure up next we have max verstappen on the top of the pyramid i think it's for himself he does he does yeah he was just incredible all weekend he absolutely controlled it he converted his pole position into a win he led every single lap the only little error he had during the race was caused by the wind which pushed him a little bit wide he yeah. he had break by wire issue pop up on his dash however did not seem to be an issue no, he was no taking issue. a little mm. bit too much curb and braking whilst on the curbs which was causing a bit of brake pad issue however fixed that controlled it yeah. took the win what more mm. can you want yeah <sighs> and he pulled out that yeah. big gap did you hear exactly. the stat about like the biggest gap in Austria was 13 seconds. Mm-hmm. The max pulls out 14, 15 on Hamilton, you know, yeah. before Lewis pitted. And he got that as well. Honestly, we might as well just leave him up there. Yeah. yeah. I just have his little end, space at the top. I think in the end, they figured it would have been a 17 second gap if it wasn't. Obviously, Hamilton pitting made it like look ridiculously. For like the, mm. anyone watching who didn't watch the race, I thought, oh my God, that gap's massive. But we know that obviously yeah. he pitted. Did you see at the end though, as Max came over the line, he like slowed right down and he just knew he could. He had 40 oh, seconds. I thought he was going to stop. And I was like, what are you doing there, mate? Yeah, Don't I was do that. Thinking, I was stressing. <laughs> and then I was like, oh wait, the checkered flag's out. He's passed the checkered flag and he can mm. slow down because he's got 40 seconds back to Lewis Hamilton. He was probably around about turn three. So... Oh, See, one, one comment I have to make about that is I'm annoyed at everyone being like, well, the gap would only be this much seconds if Hamilton had to pit. Hamilton did pit, though. Yeah, that's <laughs> annoying. Like, the, com- the commentators kept going, well, it was only 17 seconds. I was like, well, no, it, it, it was 38. It was 38 but, but, seconds mm, because Hamilton but did up. pit. Hamilton yeah, did yeah. decide to go in, so the gap was well, obviously 38 that, seconds. Mm, that isn't like on... I don't know how to explain it. Like, I was trying to speak about that, that wasn't, wasn't like a gap that speed. he had made. Yeah, yeah exactly. It that's wasn't... What, yeah. He hadn't made but, that yeah. gap himself. But he made like a 17, 18 bigger. second gap, which I think is exactly. just insane. Mm. Exactly. It was it was only like four. And then mm. all of a sudden he pulled out loads of time. And that Gosh. big gap they did was even from Red Bull strategy where Hamilton reacted to Checo pitting to get the fastest lap back. Yeah. So technically that's on, you know, Red Bull doing a good strategy to make Hamilton pit again. Yeah. So well done. I would well say done. it's on merit. Yeah. Well done. Right, that is the pyramid. So, Red Bull are still leading the constructors with Mercedes right behind them. Lily, tell us about this little feud we've got got, got, got going on here. The feud <laughs> Mercedes is just, versus Red Bull. It's what I have dreamed of from being like 13, 14 as a little Max fan, like little Lily watching it, has dreamt of this battle, right? Dreamt of it. I just think it's because we went into this race today not actually knowing who was going to win, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. As much as Max got pole, it was a bit of a, you know, we actually don't know who is going to win on like long run pace. And that's what makes it interesting. Obviously, it's a bit of a boring race, but I think it makes it way more interesting that we have no clue whatsoever what's going on. You know, Mercedes and Red Bull, I was going to say they're switching out every race, but obviously Red Bull have done like three in a row now. Oh, God, they have, haven't they? Oh. Mm-hmm. Do you want the last, I'm going to just give you a little stat, which is nothing, it's to, the last time things like this have happened for Red Bull, you know, back to back poles, back to back wins. Do we all know what happened? Do we do 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 did, we all did know what Did a certain did a certain Sebastian Vettel win the championship? Yeah, um, yeah in twenty thirteen. Did Red Bull was... win, Lily? Yeah, just a little stat for you, you know, just to get it out of there. Obviously, Mercedes have said they've stopped developing their car. They're developing next year, and I feel like that's just a bit of an excuse mm. because it's like, oh crap, we're not doing very well. We need to we need to put the blame somewhere and look mm. really good. And oh, it's just because we're too good. We're developing next year's car. Like no. Like, let, let, mm-hmm. let, even Louis said in his interview that like, we need to get some upgrades out here, yeah. which proves they've not stopped working. Right. Yeah. That's just it, that was one little thing. They seem to be trying to fight through the FIA, though, as well. That's one thing I noticed with the flexi wing. Mm-hmm. Red Bull did it to Mercedes last year. Mercedes did, doing it to Red Bull this year. 
uh, is it bugging me because it's on my side now? Yes. <laughs> but you know, like, I mean, they I gotta do it. it. Yeah. I was the balls in your last thought. year when it was like get rid of Das. I was like, yes, get rid of it. And now it's like get rid of the thing that's helping Red Bull. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, don't <laughs> do it. Do <laughs> but honestly, the battle is it. it, it oh, I can't put it into words. There's now forty points in the constructors championship. Whew. Forty, mm. and it's eighteen. That is a lot. The drivers. So like, the drivers is very close, but. 40 points is usually what a Mercedes had by this time. Isn't that eight, like, that's a ish. lot. That's like first and second. Like Mercedes could come first and second now. Both Red Bulls retired and they'd still be ahead in constructors. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's mental. That's like, they've got like a decent, and I think Perez is to thank for that. Obviously Max is the one who's Getting up the big there points. most of the time. Mm-hmm. But if you think back to Baku, yeah, oh God, my voice really <laughs> If you think back to Baku, like, it was Perez who was there on the ball. When that when is. everything went wrong mm-hmm. for Max, Perez was on the ball, just like Bottas wasn't there. But this weekend, Bottas was there. So if anything was to, like, if anything went wrong for Hamilton this weekend, Bottas was there. He got a three-place grid penalty, which... It was a 50-50 mm-hmm. thing. Like, it, what he did was quite, like... <sighs> funny and dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it Didn't he try to pull to away watch. in the wrong gear or, like, in second gear or something? Yeah, yeah. It was amusing to watch, I'm going to be honest, like after the fact knowing that no one was like, you know, bowling pinned down by his car. Um, <laughs> no, but it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny to watch now, but I think, I don't want to say McLaren overreacted, but if you watch the video, he wasn't actually near a person. But if he'd gone into the wall, yeah, if he'd gone into the wall, the debris would have taken people out. If if it had just been slightly further over. But my favourite part of that was the Michael Massey conversation. Being like, Michael, Michael, Michael. you've got to take it out as all. And I was like, mm, okay. I love the and way then, they always start going, Michael, Michael. Uh, yeah, as if, like, this, as if Michael doesn't notice for him. Like, Michael, well, today actually wouldn't have known. Like, he was sat on his cup of tea, you know, mm. the need, that wake-up call. But yeah, obviously, there's some very interesting things happening with the pit stops very soon. Uh, th- Not exciting. Anger me as a Red Bull fan, I'm going to be honest, because I feel like it's just done to Red Bull. But obviously, I'm not the most technical person. I don't know all this. So I'm going to leave this one to Sid to explain a little bit more because I have no clue. He doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah, Before I, I tell it. you about the new pit directive, let's just give credit where credit is due. Valtteri Bottas has had his 60th mm-hmm. podium finish, making him the 10th most successful driver. And he's also had his sixth podium at Red Bull Ring making him basically have he holds the most podiums at this track so Valtteri okay, Bottas okay, has absolutely okay. smashed it at the park this weekend he's he's doing amazing okay let's take a look at pit directive then so a direct directive the media don't get to see this it's only within the teams the teams are the only ones who know exactly what this says it's not like a regulation it's not a rule set in stone it's a directive which is it's a bit confusing as to what this means, but the teams do have to follow it. The only way mm-hmm. we can actually find out exactly what it means is by, you know, doing a bit of detective work within the teams. And I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon because we know the teams are very, very secretive. But the pit okay. directive is all about making sure the pit stops are safe because that's the issue. They believe with these fast pit stops that there's, there's no room for a human to actually be like, yes, that's right. Pit stops are meant to be completely manual. They're not meant to be automatic in any sense. And this is because they need to be safe. We can't have unsafe releases. It's not for a robot to check and say it's fine. Do you know what I mean? It's not for a piece of technology Mm. to assure that it's safe. It needs to be checked by humans so there's no error in it. Only human error, obviously. Yeah. So basically what this now means is that there's going to be time margins that you have to complete stuff within. So it'll be an extra few tenths added on because you'll have to spend, you'll only be able to do, you won't be able to stop doing something until you've done 0.2 seconds doing this. That's how it will be because some teams have sensors in their guns, which Rebel definitely have, which Mm -hmm. sends a message to the little board in front of them, you know, where it used to be a lollipop stick to tell them that they can be released. And so now they're not going to be able to have, well, they're going to be able to have that sensor, but they're going to have to check it themselves and yeah. have that extra bit of time they're checking it. So there is a limited time. Think about it like Extreme E. You know when they have the changeover of the drivers? They have yeah, to be yeah. in mm-hmm. that stop for a limited amount. There's a time 
they have to stay in there even if they're done before they have to wait until it gets to that time yeah it's the same it's with work mm-hmm. and things like that yeah. yeah they have to have like a it's like a 55 seconds or something even if you're done before, mm-hmm. but yeah like, you have to stay done, there. if you're done later then you're done later that, that we have to yeah. yeah exactly exactly they used to have it in formula e as well when they switched cars in the early seasons it had to be under a minute or something and it couldn't be really fast because you know they have to be able to strap them safe has to be checked over that it's completely safe this is all for safety reasons obviously however as christian horner said there is a fear that formula one is being over regulated and i personally can see the fact it's being done by for safety but Mm. i'm also quite upset that it's taking that excitement of the pit stops away because you know races can be won and lost in the pit stop we all know that and it Mm. it really yeah we saw that with Perez today it's just nerve-wracking not nerve-wracking but kind of like heart-wrenching that we may not get this we will still get the competitiveness of pit stop but it's not obviously we see sometimes we see five second pit stops sometimes we see two second pit stops they're just going to be a few tenths slower yeah I think in work you still see a race won by a pit stop so when there's a driver change they feel like it's 120 seconds you've got mm-hmm. to be in for because obviously they're strapping a the driver in so uh, correct me if I'm wrong it might not be 120 seconds but you still can win the race with the pit stops because yeah. obviously a two minute pit stop isn't you're never going to get that in F1 unless you've your boss off but you know <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> to get that one in there <laughs> it, it's still, unless you're Mercedes yeah unless you know do a two a two day pit stop but it still adds excitement into the race in a, in a way because it's yeah. still sort of, you know. Does that make any sense? I, I, don't I completely make any sense. get where you're coming yeah. from. Thank you. Mm. I think it's weird for the mechanics who are doing it because they've always been like, we have to go as fast as possible. This is our goal, and it mm-hmm. like might it like changes their mentality or it's a bit it's gone it's a bit weird now. Or yeah, I don't definitely. I get why they've done it for safety, but have they said there's a reason because yeah. is there anything recently that's happened where they've said no. this is why because you know something happens and they introduce the halo and something else exactly. happens and they do something related to it See, nothing the, recently the only, has happened because the, of how fast the pit stops are the only unsafe release i can think of that happened recently was mick schumacher which they quickly resolved that was the only unsafe release we've had but, but that wasn't managed because to get of him a, before the pit yeah lane. That wasn't, wasn't because of a fast stop. That was like a three second stop. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Last, the three last three big seconds. one. That, three no, well, whole the seconds. Last big one that, so I, that I remember is Haas. And obviously, Haas seems to have a lot of problems with their pit stops. Mm-hmm. Like, the, like, it was Haas in Australia, obviously, when they had like, you know, two years on the trot wheels flying off. Oh, that was horrific, though. Yeah. And then obviously, mm-hmm. there was Kimi Raikkonen's wheel flying off in Magello last year, but that was nothing to do with, you know, that wasn't his pit mm-hmm. stop. I just don't. As a Red Bull fan, it seems like it's been named at Red Bull. But then, obviously, last year with DAS, but then with DAS, they got to use it the whole season. Then it was banned. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it, it seems like there's no bit. motivation. Exactly. Yeah, it just seems like it's sort mm-hmm. of done because the, the teams haven't protested against it when you, you, you have. But obviously, when you can't beat them, you do try and bring them down, which I get. It's a, you know, you got, you're going to. It's, it's from direct- one at the end of the day. This directive will be brought in for the Hungary Grand mm-hmm. Prix. So it's not in just yet, but it will be in for then. And yeah. we will be sure to find out more information between now and then. I'm sure it will it will become more clear as to what this yeah, exactly definitely. means. Now, obviously, pit stops are highly involved in strategy. Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo definitely had a difference in strategy today. Lando Norris had the better one. Ricciardo had the worst one. Daniel Ricciardo had issues in his car. We think this is to do with temperature. He was reporting no power, but then it did come back up. And unfortunately, he dropped from P9 down back to P13, where he started. That was basically the end of his race. There was no coming back from that. He ended up finishing P13, just where he qualified. And, you know, very disappointing race from him. Whereas Lando Norris, on the other hand, like we've said, had an outstanding race weekend. So there is still a huge difference between both of these drivers' performances. And it's really heartbreaking to see because we know Daniel Ricciardo is a very talented driver. We know he has it in him to be winning races, leading races, getting pole position. However, it's not working for him at the minute. You know, we thought we saw a glimpse of that in free practice too. However, nothing yeah. came to fruition from that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very interesting and we will be sure to keep following him. I'm sure everyone is watching him very, very closely to see whether he can pull it back together. But one thing he I can. did read today, one thing I did read today is that his performance 
is matching the same performance he had in his first year in Renault and also matching Carlos Sainz's and Lando Norris's first year in McLaren. So yeah, it's kind I mean, of normal. So I, I think don't it's think, comfortable. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's a problem. I mean, you've got to get used to it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think give him a few more races. Obviously, he's, he's hopped from team to team in the past few years. I think we know that. It's a little bit... Musical you know, chess. A bit, bit, of a, bit of a name for himself around that palette going from team to team. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he made a really bad joke. Breaking up with then. everyone. <laughs> the one a horrific joke Breaking up. hearts. I was like, I can't make that mm. joke. Breaking hearts, guys. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell everyone after the podcast. Don't worry. I think but, I know um, where your joke was going. Yeah, we both, de- we all definitely know where the joke was going. Um, but yeah, I just, I, f- I forgot where I'm going now. I've got to carry on. He's definitely improving and he's getting there. <laughs> yeah, I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, he's getting yeah, yeah. there and he will get there. He's He's got the ability. So... The, the main heartbreak I think all Formula One fans had in this race. No, I, I don't, don't think about it. I don't think you could be a Formula One fan and <laughs> not have cried. Heartbroken and there's not have wanted to cry at <laughs> yeah. least. So George Russell had power unit issues, and it seems to me that he has a little bit of a curse on his back when it comes to getting close to his first points finish in a Williams. Maris, tell us more. Mm. Every t- I swear, every time we've seen him get close to points something has happened he's crashed he's had issues so he had Imola Austria and Mugello last year where he had problems near the points whether he crashed out under mm-hmm. the safety car or something and then this year we saw Imola again with his crash with Bottas and then Styrian Grand Prix don't know what it is with George and you can say it's an experience from him but it might just be because he's you know it's a stressful situation he knows how much it means to Williams but also think about the car. It's probably not the best car to drive. It's probably very hard to control, you know, dirty air. And compared to, you know, being in the Mercedes, it's probably much harder to control. Yeah. And even if you compare him to Latifi, Latifi's probably making those silly mistakes as well. It's just that he's doing it in P16, P17, and George is doing it in the top 10. So when he makes a mistake and loses a few places, it looks so much worse than going from 17th to 19th. Yeah. So people who come at George and then say, oh, that's why he doesn't deserve it. He does. You just got to think the car that he's in. Isn't... And, you know, today wasn't his fault. Came in, had about 10 million pit stops. Mm. So that was really upsetting. But with a better car that, you know, would be easier to drive and hopefully not have mechanical he faults, he, yeah. he can do really well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was our main talking points from the goals of many. The Styrian Grand Prix. However, <laughs> over in our Discord server, you can join our Discord server yeah. by going to the link in mm-hmm. our description and clicking mm-hmm. Discord. Go and join it. Yeah. We're always in the VC over there. But I'm going to read out some of their highlights from but the Grand Prix. I'm going to have a look at them as well now. Kasim's yeah. was Max winning again. Aaron's was Max proving why he'll be the champion. Killian's was it finishing. Moe's <laughs> was Sergio Perez <laughs> almost showing Bottas who is boss. Sam's was Max's burnout at the end. Ethan's was Bottas on the podium. Ryan's was the comeback of the Ferraris. Carlos starting P12 and finishing P6 and Charles coming back from the back after lap one to finish P7. Well, someone else said that Russell was showing his potential. Jordan said Oh, yes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. thanks, Jordan. Someone said the highlight for me was Danny Rick losing power and McLaren's race being pretty much ruined. Oh, wow. (laughs) Oh no! no. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything else. So yeah. that is what goes on in our Discord. You should yeah. definitely come and join mm-hmm. in over definitely. there. Definitely. It's time for hit or miss. Okay. Right. So my hit this week, I have to pick two because I had to give credit to both of these drivers. Yeah. First off is Carlos. He deserved driver of the day, in my opinion. He had an outstanding race, making up six positions. 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 Yeah, that that one. That one. And also the legend that is Kimi Raikkonen. Yes, he finished P11. However, he made up seven positions. He started pretty much at the back of the grid and managed to work his way through the field. He was Uh holding people off. Daniel Ricciardo couldn't get past him for ages. It took Ricard, it took Raikkonen pitting for Ricciardo to be able to get past. And we obviously know that Kimi is a world champion and has a lot more experience than everyone on the grid. However, He's in an Alfa Romeo. It's not that good. Not mm-hmm. very good of a car. And so I think we really need to give both Carlos and Kimi credit where credit is due. 
My miss is Nicholas Latifi, and I know people can dispute this by saying he got a puncture, which caused him to be at the back of the grid. However, he has not been there all weekend when his teammate has been. Mm -hmm. His teammate was eight one thousandths off of getting into Q2, whereas Nicholas Latifi was out in Q1. I just really feel like Nicholas Latifi isn't isn't joining George up on the higher ground at the minute. He can't keep up, and whether that's because George is such a good driver that no one would be able to do that, or whether yeah. it is just the car there. We don't know. Um, but yeah, he is my miss for this week. Maris, hit or miss? Mm -hmm. So I've decided that the second half of the race didn't happen. So my hit is going to be George. <laughs> um, I'm just blocked out my mind. Nothing happened anyway. You're like um, me. <laughs> Block it out so you don't have to so, deal with yeah. it. <laughs> Block out the trauma. So yeah, you just said, obviously he had an amazing quality, 8,000th off um, getting into Q3. Started P10 on merit as well nothing to do with well yuki uh grid drop but to get p11 on merit in the yeah. williams compared to where his yeah. teammate is and then you know climbed places we've seen before that he's dropped but this week he went up to p8 kept pace with all the other cars around him could have finished in the points most likely would have if it wasn't for the um power unit problem so yeah honestly he had uh, we thought last week was good, but he finished P12 on merit, but he legitimately could have got points this weekend. Oh, um, so hopefully, because it's the same track next week, he can replicate it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're all praying for him. Let's go, George. Um, Let's go. And then, yeah, <laughs> my miss is going to be Esteban Ocon. We touched it earlier on, but I feel like this weekend he was the furthest away from his teammate, bar yeah, just the Williams there. guys just did nothing significant wasn't mentioned like at all you know he's not giving any hope to the team that they've made the right decision to sign him if anything he's disproving what they thought yeah. of him you know finished p14 same as the last race so yeah very disappointing performance from him mm -hmm. i agree with you there i agree with yeah. you there now Lily, who's gone for a little bit, something a little bit different this yeah, week. Yeah, I have. Miss. Hit on so miss. So my hit and miss is actually the same person. So it's Charles Leclerc. So he's my miss, obviously, for the first a few laps. He And the ranking instant. He was shocking. But then to climb back up, he, he has to be my hit there. But obviously, I can't go without giving Max a mention in the hit on miss section. You know, he was originally going to be my hit, and then I was like, well, Shal kind of deserves both, and I'll be, I'll be different, you know? Quirky, so quirky. Yeah, I'm quirky. Um, <laughs> but that's what I did. But then, obviously, Max just needs a mention on mine because it would be wrong if I didn't mention him. It, I, you'd think I was ill, but let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, Shal had a good race towards the end of it. He got points. He His overtakes were pretty good when he wasn't slicing someone's front wing off. Um, but, yeah, all in all... That's my hit and miss. Like, there's not much more to say. We've touched on Charles. And there isn't really much more to say about Max because his race speaks for himself. So that mm -hmm. was the Styrian Grand Prix. We'll be back again next week for the Austrian Grand Prix. The same track, the beautiful Red Bull Ring, yeah. located in the Alps with the beautiful, you know, sound of music vibes, green, yeah. green, luscious grass way. that I just want to lie in and <laughs> yeah. frolic. Well, actually, I, I would I'd lie in it. My hay fever says no. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I, I could <laughs> sense it. But that was, as I said, the Steering Grand Prix. Yeah. Thank you all for watching our review. We hope you mm -hmm. enjoyed it and we hope you got a little bit of a different viewpoint from this. Thank you for watching. Yeah, Make sure you follow us. Sector One Podcast on absolutely mm -hmm. everything. Goodbye.